Hey, how you doing? Hey, this admin from PlexCat. So this is probably going to be a pretty short, easy video. So in this one, we're just going to talk a little bit about NetData, what it does for you and, and how it helps. So NetData is a great way to basically deploy a container, just kind of check out your uh, specs. It's been pretty useful for me for when I utilize VPSs or kind of like low-end machines. So basically, we're just going to go ahead and bring up PlexCat. So again, this is a uh, part of the update container series videos. Good times, right? So this right here, we need to update actually to the newest one. I was just done doing PG fork, so <laughs> probably, I probably got like a box version of mine on here. So right now I'm using 7.54. And you see it's pretty easy to update. And we're ready to go. Okay. Oh, looks like it's gonna do some alias commands. So, anyways, um, yeah, net data is a, a great tool. One thing you have to be aware of is, is that you need to turn on uh, app guard or port guard if you're utilizing this across the internet. It's not wise to use net data across the internet without any sort of protection. Um, app guard will later on be set up so it can be individually turned on per certain apps. So right here we're in PG box. <clears throat> just type net data and let's see I already have it installed but I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes just to show proof of concept of deployment because it's gonna install. So <laughs> if it messes up, it'll mess up. If it works, it works. So uh, <clears throat> yeah, so with NetData, yeah, you just don't want this running across on the open internet. So if you have this on a traditional IPv4, you know, that's not good. So right now you can see that I have this on an internal network, so it's not an issue. So basically I'm gonna go over here and let's change out to 1999. And here it is. So right now, this is a virtual machine with four cores and I believe four gigs of RAM. So the things that I pay attention to most here is obviously the CPU load. So this is very helpful. Um, if you find yourself con your CPU constantly stressed at 100 percent, it's a red flag that, uh, well, you probably need some more processing power. What's going to eat most of your processing power in the use of Plex Guide is actually when you're using um, NZB Git or um, what's the other one? Zav NZBD. When you're usually unpacking containers, unpacking things, your container, I mean, your uh, CPU is going to spike through the roof. Obviously, Plex will mess with it quite a bit, but if those programs are pretty much like tagging this at 100%, expect a horrible Plex experience. Um, used RAM. So RAM is important, but it's not as important. I realize that the two biggest things that are important is actually, one, if you can get the GPU enabled, that's great. But uh, in reality, the other stuff is the CPU and the disk. So if you have a disk that's constantly stressed out, it's going to work against you too. So right here, um, when I had a like 20 core server and I had a standard HHD disk, mechanical disk, it didn't work out too well. The reason for it is, is because when I was using NZB Git and uh, Zab NZBD, they would basically max out the write speeds. What a lot of people fail to understand with the disk is that if your disk is constantly being maxed out writing, just think about it. Every other program that needs to write data is going to basically sit back and wait. Um, also, your read speeds will be impacted by your write speeds, too, because you remember when your users are loading from your uh, server or you're doing anything else, if your write speeds are tapped out, your read speeds are going to be insanely slow. So this is something you're going to pay attention for. Um, usually, it's pretty good to have an SSD, at least. Um, you can do RAID drives if you want. Um, just be aware that most 7200 RPM disks max out about 100 about, yeah, about 100 megabits, and uh, a solid state's about 500. So if you get three drives, they technically run about 300 to 325. So there's various things you can do. Um, if you also look down here, let's see what else we got. What else has been pretty helpful? Uh, the network interface has been useful for looking at traffic. Let me see CPUs here. So, yeah, there's just, there's all kinds of, like, in the depth stuff that you can pretty much look into so <laughs> I couldn't explain it all to you but that's been basically my use of um, that's been basically my use of uh, net data mostly is really just looking at the the disk and the RAM and then what's also helpful too is looking at your inbound and your outbound so if your provider is promising you one terabyte of speeds and your disk and your RAM is pretty freed up and you just have a ton of things uploading and you notice this isn't this high it's because they're probably not giving you the guaranteed bandwidth. It's just something to pay attention to. Again, kind of like we mentioned with the disk below. 
But other than that, this has been a pretty straightforward video. So, um, yeah, if you got the time, you know, please subscribe, like, comment. Um, and thanks for being part of the community. You have a good day. Later.